indoors in Nyan and all across the world. I hope you're ready. It's time for game one in this best of seven between Blacklist International and Echo. Looking at both drafts, I would assume that they're not gonna fight a lot in the early stages of the game. They're gonna fight around Riverside. They're gonna fight for the control around the turtle because they wanna make sure that they have the levels first. So if you see any kind of rotation, it's all about maximizing the minions to make sure you get as much level force on your heroes before going into the turtle phase. With two utility junglers, this is what you can expect, right? A lot of emphasis around the mid control. Why? To control the neutral objectives, like you mentioned earlier. They control plays such a huge impact in this game, and you can already see for both of the teams, Venus and Haji, Sanji and Yaoi, they're focusing a lot, putting a lot of resources down into that mid lane to create some more pressure, but still, it's Blacklist International who secure the Lethal Wanderer. Okay, so now, looking at Blacklist as well as Echo, not a lot of action will come true. I'm, I'm thinking they gotta find a way for Echo to get Yaoi on to level four because that is a very big ultimate to have in the turtle fight. It's coming up in roughly 36 seconds. So Echo as well as Blacklist International, both teams we saw in the best of five before, they like to see what the opponent wants to do first. Blacklist is asking Echo, Echo is asking Blacklist. Now Yaoi, he might get engaged for a little bit. He does have the flicker here. Pops the flicker just to escape. Blacklist International with a resource advantage before the first turtle spawns in 15 seconds. That's going to be Blacklist here, knowing that they can buy time, but up top, Benny! Benny, already caught low, flickered out of that. Blacklist International now with two advantages in terms of resource, and maybe even Oheb can rotate down below. Oh, but there's three members from Echo here. Sanji still clearing the wave. Carl Dizzy dashes on out. Sanford setting it up. Turtle less than half health. That's gonna be the final blow by Edward. Carl Dizzy gonna be stunned up, but has the heavy spin. It does not matter. It's the first blood picked up by Echo, but the turtle will be slain by Blacklist International. Killed or objective, Benny gonna be slain in the gold lane. Blacklist strikes back, making it equal. Two ults spent by Blacklist up top. Echo takes two down in the bottom, but they do get Turtle. I'm talking about Blacklist. Was that worth it, LaFell? I would say it's not that worth it because in my personal opinion, getting kills is very good because you can establish map pressure because what's the objective of getting the Turtle? Sure, you want the goal. Sure, you want the, 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 the XP, but you want more control. Now, Edward going up against Sanford takes quite a bit of damage and Sanford's gonna get chased. Circling Eagle onto Sanford here. Haji does not have the feather air strike. Oh. That's a basic attack coming in, Sanji. Not gonna be here to help him in time. Sanford falls in the XP lane. The Festival of Blood lifesteal is just not enough at this level. Three minutes in, and I'm not sure if there's enough. Yeah, no, none at all into the emblem. Many though, look at that. That's gonna be the damage coming in. The Luminar Blast charged in, but knowing that Ohem has the Purify, they decide not to commit just yet. Yeah, looking at all of the emblems as well as the way that they're setting up, Sanford. His personal goal in this game is to get at least three kills. Once he has that three kills, he will maximize his emblem. Oh my Venus getting poked out just a little bit. But now, looking at the map, if Echo could give those three kills over to Sanford, we can see Echo being a little bit more explosive. You can expect that Sanford's gonna look for it. He's gonna pressure Edward hard here. Sent him home just now because they want to time the way that this turtle goes. Again, we're 20 seconds away. Benny could be pressuring Oheb as well. Oh my Venus and Yaoi playing footsies, making sure that their gold laner gets the advantage. The zoning coming in again, right? This is what we kind of expect in the gold lane matchup. Harith, once you get to level four, isn't really going to be able to threaten the, the Lunox. And even in the XP lane, we saw that Edward was winning early on, but now that Sanford has gotten that level four, has gone a few items down, it's a bit tough for Benedetta. Oh, Turtle already spawned. Carl Tizzi spots out Haji. Sanford, oh, yeah, there's the RWM. Mm, not gonna be able to find anything else though. The sun does connect with the Feather Air Strike connecting on the Sanford. The Perpetual Fly locks him down. Edward finds the pick up. Blacklist International now with a man advantage. Rotating around a turtle. Circling Eagle onto Yao. He's gonna be able to find a stun. Carl Tizzi jumping in. Numenor Black Charge in with the flicker as well. Oheb with no purify here. Doesn't use it just yet. Why still winning the retribution battles on top? This is on force. Now Yaoi gonna be able to dodge away for now. That's a lot of burst damages. Yaoi will be slain by Edward. Echo losing out in the straight. Blacklist has amazing battlefield awareness. They knew exactly where every member of Echo was. They almost threatened a orange steal from Carl Tizzi, but they're not done. 
A stun and a knockup. It's still Matilda Airlines here for Blacklist International. Blacklist is showing what they want to do with this draft. You want to establish control. You want to make sure that the Riverside, you're winning. And the specialty of having a Matilda is when someone overextends, they're not really overextending. In their previous fight, in the Turtle, they were very focused. What do we want to do? Turtle first, but now they want to kill. And they get it, right? It's onto Venus, the Roamer. Anything that Echo can get here in the first five minutes, they will. In the first two, they were willing to trade and get some advantages. But now wait, Astan onto Oheb, forced out the Zaman Force. Pops the Purify as well. The real world inflation almost catches Oheb, but he is able to get out of that one. Haji rotating towards the gold lane with a feather airstrike to clear it out, protecting his tier one up top. This is difficult because we said for Echo, for them to win, they have to win the lanes. Here in the early game, not exactly the story because Blacklist now ahead maybe 1, 1.5k. LaFell, what's going on? I would say it's not enough because Blacklist, they understand this as well. So as long as they delay, as long as they wait for Oheb to get two items, then it's basically they're already doing at least half of their win condition. So it's not about Echo not doing it. It's more about Blacklist seeing this time and time again. We understand how your draft works, so we're just going to play around it. So even though, okay, so here's the thing. Echo, they needed to win by 2K, by 2,000 gold. That's LaFell's threshold. So if Blacklist having 1.5K lead ahead, they're really at the driver's seat. Well, right now, it does seem that way, but Echo are going to be able to force it out. Oheb going to be caught low, but Venus comes in to save Oheb again. Haji with the rotation, circling Eagle to lock Yaoi down. Good selection right now. So when the airstrike will come through, Yaoi going to be able to get the stun down onto Venus before he gets taken low. Now, guess who's here? It's Sanji with real world inflation. Jumping in, but that you go. It's going to be the guy oh! where Haji going to be slain though by Benny, who uses the chaos to take him down. Sanji still poking Venus down. Echo are looking to get the siege down onto the tier one. Meanwhile, on the turtle side, Carl is going to be taken low with Sanford for the 2v2. That's been the bravest fighter popped into the back line right now. It's Carl going to be able to find it, and Wise is going to fall. Edward finding the stun onto two with an eye for an eye to dodge away from the CC. But still, Echo. They went out on that trade. Not just that trade, but on two fronts. They pushed up top, got a kill down bottom, and took the last hurdle of the game. We got a lot here because, again, 500 gold, that's great. But Sanford having one kill. He has one stack on his, his emblem. And now, looking at this, Carl what? Easy is in too deep. He's looking for a steal here. He does get the orange buff. Not punished enough by Black International. Oh, him and Haji falling in the gold lane once again. We spoke about this winning lanes is how Echo can get it done. And Benny, three kills on him right now. Finest example of caster curse. You start talking about it, you start questioning it, and it comes up almost immediately. Yaoi with the Numinal Blast. Definite welcome to cancel it out. That's the anti-CC coming in. As Sanji does the damage onto the tier one. Bravest fighter by Sanford just to get out. Get that anti-CC down, unstoppable. Meanwhile, Blacklist International trying to make their way up to the gold lane. Gonna be poked down by Benny as Carl TZ sieging down that tier two in the gold lane. Carl TZ gonna be careful here. Takes the turret down, gets out with, with relative ease. What a swing for the House of Highlights. Unbelievable. I can't believe that maybe four or five minutes ago we were talking about how Blacklist was ahead, possibly way past the LaFell threshold, but now it's Echo who's pushing it 2.5k ahead. Well, they have gone way and above the threshold, and the way that they did it is because they understand, okay, we're just going to stay in lane. There's no use trying to out-rotate Blacklist at this point, so we're just going to say because Oheb is going to be the one that's going to deal a lot of the DPS damage later on, so shut him down first. Right now, there might be a Mission mid. But the airstrike was used up just to clear up the waves. Echo, with this composition so far, can constantly be threatening these sieges. And also, they can also be looking for a lot of plays on the map. A lot of kill pressure here in their lanes. Yep, and that's why they're ranked first in average kill so far. 16 plus plus. Because the way that they attack the game, the way that they approach it with their strategy, is they want to convert from kills. They don't want to take objectives only. They want to win first and then go from there, which is, I think, what they're doing here. They're baiting the Lord. This is a Lord dance if I've ever seen one. Oh, Sanji's taking low. Edward jumps in, but Sanji flickers out on the final blow. The Petrify is still available by Edward right now to use his eye for an eye, but Sanford notices that. Jumps in with the Bravest Fighter. A lot of resources spent already. Is wise. Looks for a better position. Haji going to be able to actually dash him with the wings by oh. wings. As that's going to do blast connecting onto Edward. Edward going to be taken low. Taken down by Sanford. And that's going to be a 50-50 play around the Lord. Wise here versus Carl TZ, and Carl takes it down. It's a bond force by Oheb. 
not enough to deal the damage right now as Yaoi's gonna be able to get the stun down onto Haji, who's gonna be able to dash out of that one with wings by wings. Whether airstrike to snipe Sanji down. Oh! With the dash, takes the kill onto Haji. Was that Benny Cutie DD? No, didn't even need the flicker. Dude, that no was flicker. Benny. That was Benny Q T. And again, looking at the items here, because we gotta see whether they are strong now or not. Looking at Benny Cutie, having three core items, Cloud Destiny, Lightning Treasure, as well as Divine Glaive. Right now, oh my oh. Venus getting engaged by Yaoi. Luminon Blast again, locking the queen down. Venus gonna be chased down under the tier two. Wise here providing the support. Carl TZ looking for an angle, but will back off for now. Tier one falling in the mid lane. Echo pushing the pace and the tempo. Thou shall not take my queen, says Wise. Echo pressuring mid lane tier two, even tier two down bottom. That's Sanford going solo, Lord up top. Echo is 5k ahead here, 11 minutes in. It's still not over because Black Wizards and actually they can still come back because they have a very BP front line as well as a lot of damage coming in from Haji and Oheb. Oheb just finished the Holy Crystal looking at the damage from Haji. Haji can't connect it just yet. Carl DZ is spotting people out. The Lord is here. Will Echo engage? They will. Luminon Blast charged up already. Just to zone the other members away. So Oheb comes in with on force. Twice in the front lines. Providing the support. Real world manipulation faded in. Sanji not dealing enough damage for now. Blacklist just backing off. Echo doing the same thing. Noticing they have the lead. It's disciplined plays from Echo. Relatively safe defense and siege from Echo. They did their best to get the most out of that Elemental Lord. But we have a Luminous One possibly coming up in a minute and a half. Forcing out. A feathered airstrike. Echo is relentless. They're not leaving. Yeah, but look at the way Blacklist, they're defending themselves because they're not necessarily sacrificing their own HP just to defend their base. Like, they're defending everything without taking too much. So now Blacklist, they're preparing themselves. In case Echo wants to engage, they can fight back. The problem is, Echo, they're not engaging. They know that they have a lead and they're not gonna lose the lead. Looking at the items as well, Oh, but before that, looks like everyone is just pulling everything out. Looking at Haji, he already has two main items. He's waiting for his own Holy Crystal. Once he has the Holy Crystal, the, the, the kill pressure is going to be a lot onto Echo. So right now, Blacklist, it looks like that's what they're waiting on. They're waiting for their carries to actually complete the items first. It looks like Echo has cornered Blacklist into their base. And this is the trademark Blacklist defense. A lot of teams worldwide have been on the receiving end of this defensive rubber band. And it's not impossible that Blacklist still comes back. But with Echo at 6K playing this defensively, playing this disciplined, waiting for this Lord coming up in five seconds, it looks like Echo also knows how to combat that. It's gonna be really tough now with a 7,000 gold lead technically built up by Echo. But with Blacklist minimalizing their losses, it seems like despite that 7,000 gold deficit, they're still able to contest, they're still able to open up the map without grouping up as five. Yeah, looking at the map as well, Blacklist, they're not really moving away from each other. They should understand that oh. this Lord is going over to Echo for free, having that Lunox uh -huh. makes it very difficult for you to contest. And that's the power spike we're looking at. Echo, this is the inevitable. They have set themselves up for success here. And for Blacklist, the answer is to send Agent Zero, send Edward into the long lane and try to push that because not a single tier one has fallen for Echo. They didn't even have to use the Retribution, by the way. So Carl Tizi was able to steal the purple buff away. So right now, again, Echo are just building up the way, slowly but surely, to finally take some base turrets down. This is what kind of feels bad as a barrage. You kind of don't care too much about your buffs getting taken away, but what you do care about is it's hard for you to maintain those stacks because Varus is at his strongest at, like, what, 15 stacks? Because looking at Wise now, that is a pretty small Wise. That's a small dinosaur there, and you're right. While Echo's taking away even the small camp, the small creeps in Blacklist Jungle, and then freezing the waves, waiting for it to sink with this Lord, then this is the best that Blacklist can do. Oh, there's a couple of ults uh -oh. spent in. Oh, very low. And we're gonna be caught on the Luminon Blast as Benny jumps in with the damage. And that's the combo, the notorious one. As Echo now looking for the siege into the base turret in the mid lane. Lord still marching in the top lane. Concealed play, gonna be popped in. Echo looking for more. That's the feather. Airstrike popped in, but look at Sanford, he flickers under. Haji, but he's gonna be able to get out for a bit. Haji gonna fall. The circling eagle does not save the queen. Oheb, the last man standing, but Echo will secure game number one. Anglimang Echo fans make noise all around as their team takes game one.